Hi and welcome everyone, I'm Gavin Lon. So I've said it many times that C Sharp is gaining in popularity and Java is declining in popularity. But am I right? And if so, how can I even know whether that is true or not? Well, in this video, we'll look at resources that you can use to gauge, for example, how popular a programming language is relative to other programming languages. If a language is likely to gain in popularity or decline in popularity moving forward, and what sort of salary you can expect to earn as a developer that specializes in a particular programming language. The metrics provided by the resources that we'll discuss in this video can certainly be useful when deciding to invest your time in learning a particular technology or specifically a programming language. Please let me know in the comments section what resources you find are useful when assessing various trends relating to programming languages and technologies in general. All other comments are of course welcome. Your insights are always greatly appreciated. Please note that this month I probably won't be releasing a lot of videos as this month I'm delighted to say that I'm traveling to the US, specifically Texas, for this year's Free Code Camp Summit. Last year, I met the Free Code Camp team in Amsterdam, but this year, I'll be meeting the team in America. It'll be my first visit to America, so I'm really excited about that. I'll try to upload a few shorts while I'm in the US. When I get back in early March, I will of course continue to create more videos and courses. So let's get started. The famous British writer and Anglican lay theologian, C.S. Lewis once said, 99% of the things you believe are believed on authority. If you don't know who C.S. Lewis was, well, he held prominent positions in academia and he wrote the Chronicles of Narnia. I have my thanks. In today's world, we are spoiled for choice because information is so widely accessible on the web. So join me as I run through some reputable websites that we can use to glean pertinent metrics related to programming languages and technologies. The first website I'd like to look at is the famous Tyobi Index. I've included links to all the websites discussed in this video below in the description of this video. Look at that, right on the front page we see January headline C Sharp was programming language of year 2023. Also on the front page you can see that C Sharp is ranked fifth most popular programming language. And Java is ranked fourth most popular programming language. And a key metric here is the rate of change is positive for C Sharp. So according to this metric, it is gaining in popularity. And when you compare it to the rate of change pertaining to Java, C Sharp definitely looks like it is gaining and Java is declining. But I would advise a healthy skepticism when looking at such metrics. As much as I may want to believe this metric as a C Sharp developer, it is important to have at least a basic understanding of how the Tyobi index arrives at these metrics. So how seriously should we take these metrics? It says here on Wikipedia that the Tyobi index is calculated from the number of search engine results for queries containing the name of the language. The index covers searches in Google, Google Blogs, MSN, Yahoo, Baidu, Wikipedia, and YouTube. The index is updated once a month. So those are the sources from where the Tyobi index data is captured. It is not clear as to what process is followed in arriving at the metrics on the Tyobi index website. So we are largely believing the relevant metrics based on the authority of the Tyobi index. Well, the next website I'd like to look at is the famous Stack Overflow website. We can see here that there is a lot of metrics provided about the popularity of various popular technologies and programming languages. What salary you can expect to earn when employed working with these programming languages and technologies, and so on. An interesting metric here is telling me that in fact, as a C Sharp developer, you can on average earn more than Java developers. I had actually stated in one of my videos that I thought Java developers would perhaps earn slightly more than C Sharp developers, but perhaps the tides are indeed turning. So in order to assess the reliability of the metrics provided by Stack Overflow, we can see that the website does tell us how the relevant data on which these metrics are based are captured. In May 2023, over 90,000 developers responded to our annual survey about how they learn and level up, which tools they're using and which ones they want. 
Welcome to the 2023 Developer Survey. For 13 years, we've delivered industry-leading insights regarding the developer community. This is the voice of the developer, analysts, IT leaders, reporters, and other developers turn to this report to stay up to date with the evolving developer experience, technologies that are rising or falling in favor, and to understand where tech might be going next. This year, we went deep into AI ML to capture how developers are thinking about it and using it in their workflows. I believe that we should always view metrics like these with skepticism and always conduct our own additional research. So we can certainly use these metrics to get a general idea of what salaries we are likely to earn, but we should further our research simply by looking at real-time data related to actual jobs. So how do we do this? Well, we can perform a search for jobs within a particular area using, for example, a reputable employment recruitment website like Indeed.com. So let's perform a search on jobs for Java developers in one of the world's major cities, New York. You can see here how many jobs when searching for Java developers in New York are returned and we can also see real salaries on offer. Let's perform a search for C-sharp developer jobs in New York. So you can make relevant comparisons in terms of the number of jobs on offer for various types of programmers and get an idea of how much you can expect to earn in a specific area using reputable job recruitment sites like Indeed.com. In order for any data to be useful, of course, it has to be measured relative to your specific context. Your specific context may be very different from mine. You may, for example, live in a small town where there is huge demand for Java developers and where, on average, Java developers earn more than C-sharp developers. The amount you earn will, of course, depend on your current skill level. For example, what do intermediate C-sharp developers earn relative to intermediate Java developers? What do junior C-sharp developers earn relative to junior Java developers what do senior C-sharp developers earn relative to senior Java developers? So you need to tailor your research to your particular context in order to glean the most meaningful information pertaining to your particular requirements. So let's look at some other websites that provide general metrics regarding how favorable certain programming languages currently are. We have Redmonk. We have PYPL, or Popularity of Programming Language. You can see that the picture here is painted slightly differently to the one portrayed on the TIOB index. But it is also interesting that there is also a lot of consistency. You have the IEEE spectrum. And you have the Octaverse. And right on the front page here, we see a quote. After nearly 30 years of Java, you might expect the language to be showing some signs of wear and tear, but nothing could be further from the truth. So that is very interesting. This website is showing favorable sentiment towards Java. I really like the methodology on how this website purports to glean its data. This report draws on anonymized user and product data taken from GitHub. One size does not fit all. So when we do our research, it is important to tailor our research to our own particular criterion. What information do we need to make particular decisions? So for example, if salary is your main criteria, you need to not only trust the various websites discussed in this video that display various metrics. These are, of course, very useful. But we must also look at salaries for desirable jobs in our particular locations. As discussed, a great way to do this is to use popular recruitment sites like Indeed.com to search for jobs available in your chosen programming language in and around the area in which you live. 
If you are just looking to learn your first programming language, perhaps your criteria is to learn a great language, but that doesn't necessarily have a steep learning curve when compared to other candidates. The websites that I've mentioned in this video are great places to start and do provide very useful information, but you should always further your research based on your personal criteria. Another key element I would encourage you to understand is how AI is likely to be integrated into a particular language or technology. AI integration will no doubt have a significant impact on a programming language's future. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please let me know in the comments section what resources you find are useful when assessing various trends relating to programming and technology in general. All other comments you may have are of course welcome. Your insights are always greatly appreciated. If you like this video, please hit the like button and please consider subscribing. And please ring the bell so that you'll be notified of future releases from this channel. And please feel free to share this video with anyone you feel may benefit from its content. If you'd like to thank me by buying me a coffee, you can do this at my Buy Me A Coffee webpage at this URL. It will of course be greatly appreciated. I love reading your comments, so please feel free to leave me a comment. I hope to see you soon. Thank you and take care.